This is P. Corielli reading for the role of Goose <laughs> in, in Maverick 2. P. Corielli for the role of Goose. This is the Pete and Sebastian Show with Pete Corielli and Sebastian Maniscalco. All right, Pete and Sebastian Show. We are back. Even more high tech than last week. You're looking fantastic. I'm looking right at you. This is great. How you doing, Sebastian Maniscalco? Uh, yeah. So uh, last week was good. I looked at the, I looked at the final footage. Um, I'm, I'm getting rid of this chair. Done. All right. I okay. Well, but I got. Can I just say, from a comfort level, I could barely go two hours in this desk chair. So you might want to reconsider because that looks really comfortable. It's comfortable. It's just it's not looking it's not looking right on camera, and All that right. screen in the back looks like shit. So we're gonna change that up next week. We're gonna switch it all around. I'm gonna just have a all black right. backdrop. So uh, the aesthetics of it need to be tweaked a little bit, but um, I'm I'm curious to find out this week what the people think about uh, our new setup, uh, our new audio, our new lighting, and uh, by the way. I was looking at you on the thing. I, 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 mm. you're, you're popping off the camera, bro. I mean, it's. Um, <laughs> what are you talking about? I don't know what it is. If it's if it's uh, what you're doing with your skin, the lighting he put in, but uh, uh, you're you're radiating through the lens. Uh, oh, I appreciate you saying that. It could be my tan, perhaps, but uh, think, coming yeah, off coming yeah. off the cheap white plywood. <laughs> You know, it's it's amazing what a little Walmart foam will do on contrast <laughs> to to a nice olive olive tan you got. So yeah, so oh. you're looking good. Um, so let me get into a few things here. I, I gotta Let's do I gotta it. Uh, I gotta get your take on this. I'm doing some uh, construction in the back, some some pool right. construction, right? And right. they're doing a lot of demo and. Uh, I'm really happy with these guys. These guys, uh, first they, they come and all of them are dressed the same. Something about having Love a it. uniform team out there. Right. They're all in orange, right? All of them got mm -hmm. orange on, and there's 13 of them. Oh, man, I love it. If you give me two companies side by side, like to do landscaping, and one are all in the same red Sam's landscaping, and the left are wearing whatever they want. I'm I'm going with the red. It's or it's telling me everything I need to know. Yeah, what what you're getting from that is from top down, it's uniformed. They're taking the job serious. No one's showing up in a, a Nike sweatshirt. They're all decked out, right? So I've done this before and I don't know if I've talked about it on the cast, but I gotta get your take on this. They're out there with a jackhammer, breaking cement, hauling wow. cement. They got a bobcat. They got a digger. They got a lot of stuff back there. It's about 91 degrees. I, s I bring out 13 ice-cold Coronas, all right? Mm -hmm. Now, I, I asked the, the, the contractor before I did this, I go, What's the rule on alcohol on a job like this? You know, like, because, you know, right. this ain't Facebook or Google where they're working in a cube in an office. This is their outside with a jackhammer. So is alcohol more accepted in this kind of surrounding than it is in a corporate America sur surrounding? I, I, my answer is yeah, right? But... Yeah, exactly. My bigger question is, do you think if I bring out the Coronas that they think, ah, oh, let's step it up a notch? Or do you think they do the same work regardless of, of the alcohol or, or do they... I guess what I'm trying to ask is, am I perceived in a different light now that I brought out 13 Coronas to the guys, or do they go, oh, this guy likes to party. Let's 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 relax a little bit. What the hell are we breaking our ass for? What what's going through their head, if anything? Well, 
Oh, man. Well, that, that's the beauty. And I wasn't even thinking about this till you got halfway through that question. Because I was like 13 for 13. I mean, why not just bring out a case? By bringing out 13 for 13 men, you're just saying, hey, it's hot. I appreciate the work you're doing. And if you want a cold one, I got one for you. Bringing out any more than that is maybe starting to indicate, guys, it's 91. You know, let's shut it down and just have some beers in the backyard today. You know what I mean? So I almost feel like the 13 is making a clear statement. You know, takes about 15 minutes to drink one beer, then get back on the fucking Bobcat. Right. Well, it is. <laughs> Here's where I think I screwed up. Right. Brought the beer out, and now it's break time. So I'm thinking because of the because of the beer, or it was break time. No, no, like I don't think yeah. these guys take a break at all. Right. right? Yeah. Oh, oh. No. So you? Well, I mean, what do you want them to do? Crack it open and hop back up on the bobcat and drive <laughs> with, with a Corona in his hand? No, no, no. But this was like, bro. This was like siesta. You know, they were, oh, you know, crack open the beer and let's, you know, let's take a nap. <laughs> see, yeah, see, now this is, this. <laughs> that's what I'm thinking. And I'm thinking too, man, I like a cold beer just as much as the next guy. But I think it's a little presumptuous and ma what do they call it masculine or um, misogynistic i think maybe to come out with cold beer in that moment i think i would love a nice arnold palmer on the rocks you know but now you're bringing me out a beer which is going to just make me a little tired and more thirsty so nah, bro, palmer, was there another palmer, was it bro, bro come on what, 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 arnold what? palmer what, what are we decorating the house come on bro, that's, ha that's half lemonade half iced tea that's not a big deal yeah, but that's, that's, just not have, a, that's not a drink you give to, to men bro, who are working a bobcat. I, in 91, I want something that's going to quench my thirst. It's just like, this ain't 1950, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's just, we don't have, you don't have a scotch uh, when you when you have a meeting in the after, afternoon, right? You, you don't go to your manager's office and they turn around and go, scotch or bourbon? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I feel it's the same thing. I mean, my father, my grand, my uh, uncle was a steam fitter, and I'll admit his lunch was two tall boys. That was his lunch. Okay, but not so, every steam fitter was that. But uh, bro, when you go out there and you tell thirteen Mexican men you have yeah. thirteen Arnold Palmers, they're gonna look at you and go, "What?" <laughs> well, I, I don't know. Man. You say it's half lemonade. Half, or, how about thirteen lemonades? Well, how about? How about this? this what if one bro, this ain't a kid kitty party. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. These are these are these are like men, bro. They're sweating. They got orange vests right. on with hats and, and they ain't gonna have a lemonade. They would love a lemonade. I think you're wrong, man. L listen, when you finish working out, even doing a, a workout, you don't grab a Corona when you go home. You have a nice fresh squeezed lemonade or an iced tea or some water. I'm just saying, it would have been a nice second option. And how would you have reacted if one of the men said to you, excuse me, do you have like iced tea or lemonade? Appreciate the beer, but do you happen to have iced tea or lemonade? Would you, be, would, would you have a problem with that? It's absolutely. Are you, bro? <laughs> this ain't a restaurant. I'm, this is what's offered. <laughs> We're gonna break out a steak next. <laughs> it's a, it's such a simple side option, bro. It's just a glass with lemonade. You know, yeah, steak. Yeah, now I gotta go in and get the uh, lemonade and uh, make the lemonade. Uh, Come on, man. Ah, uh, well, I mean, you don't have like whatever you got that you quench your thirst with in your fridge now. Do you just do water? Do you have any iced tea? Maybe a green tea? What do you got in here? Water. That's all I got. Uh, well then, water, did you I'm offer water? water? They probably no. have an igloo ig no, pool. Just, 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 just a gesture of, <laughs> hey. <laughs> All right, here's a couple Coronas. Enjoy, enjoy it. And, and, you know, I don't know. I, I'm trying to figure out, does, <laughs> does, does that dictate the pace of work after? Do they like, let's, this guy's this guy's cool. Let's step it up a notch, or do they go? 
this guy's relaxed. We could. We, what are we working our ass off for? Right. This guy's looking at us, going, "Take it easy, guys." Yeah. Well, well, how uh, long was the, was the break? Did you? How long did they take the break to drink the beer? Was it like? It was lingering? towards the end of the day. So I mean, you know, it, I, I gotta tell you, man, I watch everything. So I'm in the house right. and I'm I'm kind of watching like other guys notice because they're all over the yard. Yeah. And I, you know, like word got out quick. There was Coronas available, you know, and uh, <laughs> bro, this guy, mid scoop on the dirt, stopped the machine. <laughs> That's the thing. All you need is three or four guys that in the group that don't drink at all. All of a sudden, you got four other guys having three beers each. Now it's a party, right? <laughs> well. well the, the the contractor said when I asked him I go is this okay to bring out to the guys I don't I don't want to like put anybody in a weird position he goes are you kidding me he goes these guys drive home about an hour in in bumper to bumper traffic he goes I wouldn't be surprised if they're cracking up a, cracking a cold one in the car on the way home <laughs> to get them through traffic. But then right. I started to then I started to think, God forbid, if one of these guys gets in an accident, right? This is where right. my head goes. And he's in the hospital, they do a blood alcohol thing on him, and they say, This guy's got this guy's got a few beers in him. Where'd he drink the beers? Oh, he's at the Maniscalco house. Now I'm in a, a courtroom uh -huh. and uh I'm getting sued. Right. Well, I mean that's a good question, but I think if you're over 18, and I mean over 21, it doesn't matter who gave it to you at that point, right? You're in a car, no, you're drinking. No, really? I mean, I know, I know bars that have gotten sued for over serving, and not that I'm over serving, yeah. but you know, the the, the bar right. has a responsibility, and they're liable. I think if something happens to someone, don't quote me on that, but. Uh, no, again, you get you get a bunch of guys that don't drink, and then one guy takes <laughs> half of the 13 beers. And he knocks back six in the corner because he's an alcoholic trying to get off the sauce. <laughs> and then he's going down the freeway, boom, you know, next thing you know, you're moving out. He's moving into his new house with the fucking pool. <laughs> oh, I hear you, God. bro. You can't risk it. Go with the lemonade next time. Arnold Palmer is a very thirst question. All right. I, I, I might switch up the beverage. We'll, we'll, we'll see. But. Here's my second uh, second uh, point to this whole thing. All these guys are Mexican men, right? And generally mm -hmm. speaking, that's who you see doing hard labor here in Los Angeles. I don't know what's going on in Fredonia. But, Amish. Uh, Amish. Okay. Well, I mean, that's 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 a unicorn, bro. I, I don't think you see any Amish anywhere oh, else no. in the United States but Fredonia. No. But, I mean, not only did they work on the house, but you get to, like, you know, go back in time uh, while you're watching. You know, it's like a little history lesson. Fucking we doing a two-hand saw. <laughs> <laughs> Would you say the Amish as a whole have an unbelievable work ethic? I mean, if you had a Mexican guy and an Amish guy, who do you go with? Oh, my, bro. That's got to be a new show on Discovery Channel. You give a group of Mexicans and a group of Amish all the same time and supplies or whatever they need, and they both got to build a shed. One scores for speed, one is for quality, one is for on site. Like, is it a shithole? Like, I want it to be nice to it when I'm, when, while you're working. Who's keeping it clean, right? You know? And I got to say, that would be toe to toe. Really? I mean, are you kidding me? Mexicans are like the hot, and and it, Mexican workers too. They they almost make it seem like they don't mind doing it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like they prefer to be out doing hard labor. My, my again, my uncle was a steam fitter. Was like that. He's like, like behind the desk. Oh God, never. You know. So, well, because you've had experience with both cultures, right. Mexican and yeah. Amish. I, I only had experience with the Mexican guys, yeah. uh, not the Amish. What are you getting with the Amish that even rivals a Mexican labor? I mean, because in my eyes, Mexican laborers, in this country at least, are probably one of the hardest working people on the planet, right? right? Absolutely, yeah. Well, for, uh, you're right. 
Amish are right there with him too, because like Amish are lacking of, and he's like they're 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 very boring people as a whole, you know. So they don't ever tend to sit around at the work site and go, "Hey, what the fuck? Did I tell you what happened last night? Nothing happened. Nothing ever." <laughs> so they just do the shit, you know. And unlike the Mexicans, they work they work on natural light hours. Sunrises, they're at your door till the sun goes down. No nine to five guy, sun to sun, sun to sun. (laughs) Oh, and here's the last touch too. If they're like up on the roof and it's lunchtime, they don't even come down because that wastes too much time. I swear, they go up at nine in the morning with a lunchbox. They don't come down till about fucking 6.30, 7 o'clock at night. It's unbelievable. (laughs) So. You get the same labor as the Mexicans. You just get it for a longer period of time, so you cut your day by three. And Amish, they you know they, they don't even know inflation, so they charge you like nineteen seventy prices, which is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> yep, they say they'll tell you they build a whole shed for you for, for like fifteen hundred dollars, and you got to put on your poker face and not th- and not let them know that that's like fucked up. You're like, all right, let me talk to my wife. That sounds like right. That's, that's, that's... well. Do they show up to the work site in the Amish garb, like with that that? Don't, don't they wear like a black <clears throat> kind of cloak? They they wear blue shirts, like an electric blue, with black overalls. And when it's hot out, they you know roll everything's rolled straw hats, uh, corn cob pipes all the time that they're constantly putting in and doing a puff and like it's like their Nicorette. And here's the deal. They have, as I told you before, they have like a, a person who's not Amish drive them. And when they were doing my roof uh, after day two of a like five day job, I put two cases in the back of the pickup truck by the end of the day. So, and I said, for the boys, when they're done, when they're done, boom. Oh. Yeah, you, know, you take them back to the barn and enjoy them. <laughs> <laughs> so. <clears throat> I've done manual labor, and I think uh, I think it's safe to say that it's it's one of the hardest things to do. I, I worked at UPS. I worked uh, construction. I worked electrical. Mm-hmm. All kind of like in my teenage years. What'd you do construction? What kind of stuff? Uh, just digging. It was uh, my buddy's. Um, father had a, a construction company and then i would do you know some side side jobs with them but it's yeah. like come on i think and this kind of goes hand in hand with where i'm going with all this i think they got to bring back the draft well it's it, it, what do you mean like for the for, for the army for, for the for the military and, and and this is how it kind of coincides with what I'm talking about. I think everybody should do some type of manual labor in their life just to just to know what it feels like to put in a hard day hard day of work. But wow. as I'm looking at the landscape of the United States, right, and yeah. I'm looking at quote unquote today's man, I don't think he's got the skill sets necessary to yeah. handle some of. Uh, the obstacles in, in in life, and I think that comes from. <laughs> Listen, because my father always told me you would have never made it in the army, right? Because yeah. I'm soft, right? I'm, I'm like I, right. I don't, you know. It, it's like going to the army and going through basic training, and then having to go maybe to war or something yeah. in that world puts a whole different perspective on your life not only are the people not getting drafted but you never see coming down the driveway with a bucket on his head jacob you know it's 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 never you know like where 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 you lost me for a second what do you mean like it's all foreign guys. We got to start bringing back oh. some of the, you know, like the the Patricks of the world to to get in there and get their fucking hands dirty. You know, like, when's the last time you, you had a laborer named Patrick? It's, it it, 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 it yeah. doesn't happen. 
I mean, listen, to, 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 I, I know your point, and, and to just say it on a smaller scale, I think if I'm right with this, it's like looking over at my neighbor and there's a 13-year-old boy sitting on his porch, and meanwhile the landscape had pulled up and is mowing the lawn, and you're like, what the, you know, what's going on? Not only that, he, 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 he the landscaper pulled up, with his 13-year-old who's going to trim the bushes. Uh, you know what I'm you're saying? Right. You're right. You're right, a lot, man. A lot of these guys bring their sons to the job site, and they're helping, right? What I'm saying is we need to bring back some type of manual labor in this country that's not all foreign guys, right? These, these, these kids that are growing up in this suburbia are on on the yeah. uh, on the TV playing video games, why Manuelo is out in the fucking yard raking leaves. I don't know you're right. It's like uh, it's turning into Rome, you know. By the end of Rome, where you just got all the elites in their robes eating grapes and getting drunk. And by the way, I don't even know. In the end of Roman times, like every other day was a holiday. They made every other day a holiday, which they're doing now, adding holidays left and right. And by the end, you just had a bunch of hardworking people, uh, you know, serving a bunch of people sitting around doing shit, never, never having lifted a finger. I, yeah, I, I, listen, as far as the draft goes, Kay, I mean, we're too old to get drafted and we both have girls. So a little easy for you to say, let's bring back the draft. You know what I'm saying? Fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> hey. You want to see me go to Canada? Do that. <laughs> <laughs> my my brother-in-law, uh, born and raised in Israel. Everybody in Israel has to go into the army, right? I know. I had a great conversation with him about that at your house. And, you know, he was more of a man than you and I or anyone around here was by that age. But... He missed out on some. He missed out on some fantastic cake parties, guy. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> he might have it's, missed out on cake parties, but you know what? For my birthday, I was just over there yesterday. For my birthday, he made me a cutting board, right? You know that, that you cut mm -hmm. in vegetables. But the cutting board, I, I, I wanted it big. He he uh, he talked to Lana um, about it. He it was about I don't know I'd say three and a half feet by three I don't know three feet by three feet maybe big and he the, just the craftsmanship involved in making the thing and I'm not saying because he went to the Israeli army that he knows how to make right, cutting right. boards but once you get into the army you all of a sudden become like. Um, Handsy, you got to figure it out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Put right, the gun right. together, take it apart, yeah. clean it. That shit comes in handy in 20, 25 years down the road when you got to whittle a cutting board for your brother-in-law. Right. Yeah. I, 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 hey, listen, you can say it about sports. You can say it about. I, I'm driving with Sadie the other day, and there's one of them signs that says, children at play, we're on a back road. You ever see those signs? And she's yeah. like, what does that mean, Dad? And I'm like, it means because children play. And in my head, I'm thinking, I want to say to her, because back in the 70s, sometimes kids would be outside running around and shit, so they'd want you to slow down. But I guess since video games have come out, they haven't taken the fucking signs down yet, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. It's like, come on, man up. Man up, I, man up. I get, yeah. That that's basically what I'm what I'm what I'm trying to get at. I'm I'm I've got to put the uh, air conditioning. The draft. Are you hot, Patrick? In here? You're not hot. I'm, I'm but the draft was a little. That's crazy. I'm still recovering yeah, I, from that comment. That, I'm recovering listen, from that comment. I'm just saying, my dad my dad got drafted, and I would think that him getting drafted has given him some skill sets in life that you just don't get. As an ordinary civilian. Right. That's all. Now, not to, obviously, anyone in the war, and I know it's insane, and I couldn't imagine, but, like, if you and I were, like, 19, and we got drafted, and there was a war, all right, and then we ran into each other in, in, in the war, first of all, we'd hit it off. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, forget it. We'd be fucked up. I, I wouldn't even want to leave the foxhole. We'd be laughing so fucking hard, right? But uh, my point is... 
Your dad is right in the sense that you and I couldn't survive the army because it's voluntary and I wouldn't want to be there. And if I was there, I probably wouldn't do well. But if it came to a point where they said, listen, there's tanks in Detroit and they're about three hours from Fredonia, everyone hands on deck. I, 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 wonder, I wonder if I'd still be able to function in that scaredness, you know? I'd be so scared, would I even do anything? Would I chip my pants? I, I couldn't imagine being that scared, you know? And then again, you and I hit it off and come out of the foxhole and they're like, we, we should write each other. And you're now, now you're not there, don't wanna fucking write. You know, and I gotta tell, I gotta tell Lana, oh God. So like, it's a whole, I couldn't imagine. I just couldn't imagine, man, but you know, maybe, Maybe you do. You just do it, you know? I don't know. Well, you know, some of these guys that were in the military, they come out of the military, and, you know, I know some of these guys who, at home, they got a firearm handy just in case. It's just, it, it, it feels like their fear level has been, like, what, what would make you and I scared? A, a military guy wouldn't even he wouldn't even bat an eye because he's got those Brave. skill sets. Yeah. Like I watch movies and I go, this guy gets gets the gun out of his drawer and he comes he comes down the stairs when he hears something, right? But the yeah. confidence in what he's doing it is like, man, I, shit, I wish I could do that. Like oh, if I come out in my living room, it ain't confident. It looks <laughs> like shit. <laughs> Everything shaking, doing a half step out there, right? I just watched a movie last night. The guy's in a plane that's breaking up, and he's got minimal time. I cry. I freak out. It's a cargo plane. He's, like, looking for the parachute while the plane's breaking. You know, they stay focused. They stay on yeah. task. Yeah. That 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 I don't have. If, if no. plane parts start flying off and I'm in the plane, yeah. it's over. That's it. That's it. Now, let me ask you this, though. I don't know history as far as this goes, but like, for example, when we stormed the beaches in Normandy or um, like, were there guys that didn't get off the boat because they were so scared? And in past wars, were there guys that like ran away instantly? Like I know in the Revolutionary War, a lot of guys ran away, but that's because they, they didn't believe in what the hell was going on. I'm just saying out of fear, like, does that happen? Like, you know, Fucking guys like, we got this. And then as soon as it's charged, one guy's like, I'm fucking out of here. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know if anybody, like, I don't know if you could do that. I, I, I think the people that you're around, your fellow men take you. They're like, get, get up. Let's go. Man. They don't let you stay back. That's the whole thing about the army. I think it's like a, a unit. You know, the the unit operates as okay. one. I now, don't now listen to listen to what we're saying, right? Again, not to get political, but we give money away left and right. You're in the war for America. You come home, you you get a two bedroom apartment for life in a in a complex with a pool. I I, I, I don't think that's too much to ask for. I don't think that it is either. I mean, these guys are putting their life on the line. They got to, like, coming out of this, they got to have something. They can't just be cast aside. Two, uh, two, week, two weeks vacation rental, Airbnb, every year for free on America, wherever you want to go. Everyone it, who's uh, been overseas and served. I think they got to incentivize it because from what I understand, they're recruiting right now in the United States military. And to go back to your point on the last, last cast, if you want to attack, you would attack now because, bro, uh, military is hiring and they're not getting any applications. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. This, right. this new wave of men and women that are coming up, they're not like the military is not high on their uh, to-do list where maybe well, 30 the, years ago it, it was a little yeah. bit more prevalent. But they're also like, now the military's got all these new rules about, you know, again, I don't want to turn into a news station here, but like the wokeism stuff. So I feel like, you know, would-be soldiers are like, I just wanted to go over there, grab a gun and protect America. This is getting very weird. Fuck it. Yeah. Yeah. So, it, could, it could be some of that. I'm just saying. Uh, well, that's what this cast is for, bro. This cast is for young boys and older men 
and women and everyone else that wants to know how a man acts. <laughs> That's a sound bite. I'm done. <laughs> I don't like the new setup. I'm too exposed. When I bomb, I, re I really bomb, you know? What do you got, bro? Come on, take us out of this. Okay, let, let me hop over. I want to tell you about a dinner I went. Uh, uh, Thursday night, Lana and I had date night. We went to this restaurant that closed down and then reopened in a new location. Italian restaurant. They got an 81-year-old guy that walks around the restaurant and speaks like half English, half Italian. Even if you don't even speak Italian, this guy's speaking Italian to you. That's how like Italian this place is, right? Love, love it. So we're sitting there. Uh, um, a woman came out to take our order, and uh, she was very nice, very sweet, Asian, like a half Asian, I think. And uh, we were kind of on the fence of what we wanted to eat. We were like, should we make this a pasta night, get kind of four different pastas? Should we do like a, maybe a salad, a pasta, and an entree? So we're all over the map. And the wine guy came out, right? Now the wine guy comes out, and this guy has got his hair all pulled back, and he's got a ponytail, right? And he's Italian. He's got a suit on. Hello, how are you? My name is... Paolo, right, right from the get-go, this guy's like right off the boat. And I tell him, I go, you know, we like Cabernet, but we're more into Pinot Noir now. So could you bring me something that's kind of close to a Pinot Noir that's Italian? I got it. Don't say nothing. I got it. Don't worry about. It. Comes out, but boom, you get the thing. Pours the wine. And as he's pouring the wine, the waitress is there, and I'm talking to him, and Lana's talking to the waitress, and he goes, "What do you have tonight?" I go, "I don't know, on the fence." He goes, "Let me, let me, let me tell you what you should do." Right? He, and then he goes through the whole thing: get a salad to begin, get one pasta, oh, yeah. get one pasta, or four pastas. Now come on, and then you get branzino for two, beautiful the vegetable. This guy basically ordered for us right but the fact that he was italian from italy with an accent raised his credibility level that surpassed the 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 asian female uh server Absolutely. she didn't have any of the now if we were in a Maybe it's just the fact that this guy was Italian, had the accent, it was from there, and it was an Italian restaurant. He basically right. superseded anything the waitress was going to tell us, right? I, I, of course. I mean, then you add in the ponytail on top of that, just <laughs> to let you know that comes out on Sundays when I play soccer in the park. <laughs> I, you know what I'm saying? So. I think it's part of the plan. I think they send the Asian lady out there and go, listen, pretend to take their order, then Fabrizio is going to come out and interrupt the whole fucking thing, right? I mean, shit. I think this guy, by the way you described him and the way he spoke, I think that should be part of their shtick. Like, there's no menu. He comes up to the table, asks a couple questions, like, you like chicken and fish? You tell him, then he goes, this is what we're going to do. And he tells you what you're gonna be eating and drinking. And then he just does a slide away. All you see is the ponytail bouncing in the distance. Oh, bro, I'm telling you, for someone to come to the table and tell you what you're gonna have, Man. you can't beat it. You can't no. beat it. it. It just takes all the pressure off. Like, should we get this? Should we get this? This guy just had a little side. And, and, and the way he spoke with the, right. with the, with the hand, you get salad, hmm. right? Right. And then, and, and then, and then, like this, you know, like yeah. And then you get the pasta small, and you split, it, you know, like you could just almost see it coming out based on his hand movements. Right. And then the one, right. the button, and then he, then I don't know. This guy took the table over. He's the wine guy, but then he brought the fish out to you know they, they show you the fish before they cut it 
this guy brought out the fish. So I was thinking, is this guy so good that they said, listen, we know your game is wine, but the way you're like presenting the wine, you got to present the fish too. Oh, it sounds like it. It sounds like it sounds like this guy is just listen, everyone else has a job and you just kind of slide in and slide out and help everyone and charm everyone, you know, bring out the fish, do the wine. If you want to break a little bread in front of them to show the inside, whatever you're feeling, you just have car planche to slide around the restaurant. <laughs> not yeah. only not only that, he goes, if he, he's telling about his Italy trip. Because he went back to Italy, he goes. When he did. you when you go to Italy, you you call me. I, I set it up. I tell you where to go, bro. This guy's a travel agent. Oh my! This guy's everything you want all in one. I mean, all in one. This is unbelievable. So I don't. I never used to do this when I went to restaurants, but I find it interesting to start engaging with the staff. Because uh, they're really knowledgeable on a lot of food and wine, and they've lived a life, these people. You know, I mean, I, I used to be in the service industry, and I never used to want to talk to the table because I'm like, I don't know, they want to talk. They just want to kind of be. But once you start talking with staff and getting involved and, and finding out where they're from and what they like and this, that, and the other thing, it adds another layer to the evening other than you and your wife just talking the whole time. To talk to Paolo to see where do you go in Sicily. Now we're talking about Sicily and where yeah. we're gonna go. Yeah. It just adds right. a nice little flavor to the it's a it's it's a it's a Pete and Sebastian show tip. Right. Talk to the staff because these people have a wealth of knowledge not only about food and beverage, but life itself. That's I listen, that's a fantastic tip, but would you say there's a certain type of restaurant that they can and can't work at. I mean, like, I'll give you an example. Yesterday, we just dropped Sadie off a camp, um, and the, her camp is on this lake. So she's there for the week. So then Jackie and I made a day out of it Sunday. And we went and we had dinner out on a lake about 6 o'clock at night. Beautiful lake. Again, you know how I'm looking for a lake house goal. So I'm now I'm into checking out lakes and what, they, what they're like. So I go, the waitress comes over. We're on a floating dock on the end of the restaurant on the lake. And I say to her, um, do you happen to know how deep this gets out in the middle? Oh, no, I don't know. Oh, a lady dropped the shades the other day right here off the side. And she said, they're too expensive. I'm going in. And she jumped in. It was only up to her knees. They were pretty good shades. And, she's ta and now Jackie's hitting me under the table for starting this thing. So, you know, do you think I'm going to ask her next if she's going to college when the summer season's <laughs> over? Yeah, no, you got to you got to really kind of sift it out. You got to you got to really figure out what your environment is, where you're at and and then engage from based there on. based on a lot of different factors. I'm just saying <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm I'm just saying, by the way, <clears throat> get back to the lake. And I grew up going to lakes. I gotta tell you, man, something about coming out of a lake, there's like a film you get on your body. Like, you come out of an ocean, it's, oh, God, this is unbelievable. You come out of a lake, right away, you're like, what's on me? Right? It, I, I ain't into really? this. Like, it's like a sludge coming out it, of a it, la lake water. <laughs> it, de it depends on the lake. I was, listen. I was on Lake Canandaigua Lake off of Rochester with uh, my friends this week. I didn't shower. I was in the lake all day, and then I just went to bed. Nobody showered, even oh, uh, as far as bro, I know. Bro, no, oh, bro, bro, nothing. I was fine. It's a freshwater lake. Growing up, Jackie said her father, when they'd go out on the boat, at the end of the day, he would throw her and her brother into Lake Erie and then toss them a bar of soap. So that when they came off the boat, they didn't have to go home and shower. Now, I no, go into the is, ocean. I go into the ocean. I love the ocean, but you come out. I, I feel like I'm wearing a a, a pair of tighties a, a, a all around. Like the salt just dries my body up. I can't. I need to. I need to get fresh water on me as soon as possible. 
I come out of the water in the ocean, I feel like someone gave me medicine. I feel alive. I feel like I could tackle the day, bro. Something about ocean. Uh, you come uh, out of a lake, uh, you feel like you look down and you're like, I don't know, maybe it's the lakes I was going to as a kid because the only lake I could see me coming out of and going, wow, I'm cleaner than when I went in is Lake Como. Right? I mean, you come out. <laughs> <laughs> you are so Italian, bro. It's unbelievable. For all we know, they got a paper factory across that lake from Clo Clooney's house just pouring in toxin. But, yeah. No, I hear you. It does look stunning. But you got the one arrow. I mean, um, where does everyone go? Bear Lake or something two hours away from, Cal uh, from LA? Where, where do, what do we got over here, Patrick? What's you got the two lakes. Arrowhead Lake, I think it is. Yeah, Arrowhead and uh, Big Bear. Yeah, I I went up there with Jackie with the with the Jeep one time for a weekend. Oh, you got to go up to those lakes, man. They are If you told me, I'd bend over like a dog and lap that shit. Oh, okay. It's it's maybe it's the lake. I grew up around Lake Michigan, which Oh, yeah, you fucking auto park capital of the world. <laughs> and uh, Lake Geneva, I went to Sagatuck. Uh, Sagatuck, Michigan. Yeah, the lake the lakes are just kind of murky. I got to get I, to a nice lake. Now, do you think, like, if you lived on, if you had a house on Malibu, if you had to, do you think if you came out of the ocean for a nighttime dip, dried off, and, and laid in bed, you could get a good night's sleep with all that ocean water on you, or you still need to rinse off? No, I think you need to rinse off. I'm just saying, like, coming out of the ocean, I just feel like the energy of that ocean. It's true. Yeah, it is true. Like, That's true. Like, I'll give you that. Right? The, the, and the yeah. lake, fe lake feels a little kind of calm and you're not really getting any like juice out of it you know yeah well you come out of an ocean with the waves it's a, it's, a, it's an assault by the time you fight your way out of the, out of the waves right at our age now i mean especially you think you're in the clear and then that one last one knocks you on your ass and now you got to go back out to ridge because you got sand up your ass again it's a whole thing well you bring up a great point because i've been in this situation recently i was in miami and i was in the ocean and a wave hit me and I was off balance. Now I'm thinking to myself, I don't remember ever getting hit by a wave and being this discombobulated, right? Is, <laughs> right. Is, is this an age thing where at 50 when you get hit by a wave, you know, <laughs> It could possibly be a, a, a an emergency room. Yeah, like could a good solid wave hit you on the side and dislocate a hip after, after 50? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But did you notice when you were in Miami, I mean, when a nice sized wave came, did you do the go under thing where you go underwater? Well, that's another thing. I don't go under. I try to like jump and get my head over the, oh, over oh, the wave. I like that move. I like that move uh, too. I can't go under because once I go under, I just, there's a lot coming at me in my ear, up my nose. You know, there's, I don't know yeah. how to properly go underwater and come out of that without having uh. a lot of liquid in my <laughs> head. <laughs> yeah, you just, you just blow out of your nose as you come up. You took swimming classes in episode season three yeah. to cast. Yeah, I don't know how to do that. I do not know how to blow air out of my nose when I'm underwater all right I don't know well do. i will say this about age two when i was a kid going to the oceans on the east coast you know a good wave comes in you try to ride it it wipes you out i go in the ocean past couple of years i mean i can't tell you how many times the waves coming in and i'm like too big ducking down i'm keep ducking down i'm like and then i finally just i'm now i mostly stay uh in the froth you know the white bubbles. That's yeah. that's me right there. I like it there. That's nice. No, I don't. I don't like going out too too far either. I'm not. I, I uh, yeah, shit. The last, last couple of times, to be honest with you, I've uh, ankle deep. Ankle deep. That's like grandma level, right? Know. Just, just sits know. there on the edge, kicking her feet in the in the wet sand. You're right there with the grannies <laughs> with the bathing suit skirt. You ever see that thing? Oh god. <laughs> When do, you, when do you pull that off the rack? You know what I'm saying? When do you reach an age where you go, it's time for the skirt bathing suit. 
speaking of water, bro, I just want to add one last thing. So I go to the club where we belong, uh, the pool club, right? It's I, it's it's like a country club, but it's not. It's like you pay like two hundred a month, and you got to spend it on food. So anyway, um, the pool's heated. Now every time Jackie and Sadie go, they come home and tell me, "Oh, I missed it. It was so warm." Every time I go, it, it's I get it on a cold day. I don't know what's going on. Like a parent complains, so they lower it for the point is we go the other day and the lifeguards are on the lifeguards they're home from college you know the young girls and guys hanging out up there with their shades on so i go to get in the water and uh, i always make a big deal out of it when i come in i throw sadie in first and real loud i go what are we talking my kind of temp what are we talking so the lifeguards know right and there's a dial in a shack right around the bend where you can just go turn that thing right up you know so uh Sadie goes in and she knows my temp. She's like, hey, I don't know, Dad. You know, so then uh, I dip a toe and I'm like, is it, is it even heated at all? And the lifeguard goes, uh, I think it's at a good temperature. You know, I, she goes, it's going to be kind of hot today. I, I was in it. I think it's just right. And then I look over at Jackie and I go, she thinks it's just right. Does she pay 250 a month? Is she paying 250 a month? <laughs> Again, this goes back to what you said earlier. I'm 18 years old. Uh, someone says that. I do a jump into the water come out with my hair back, go right into the shack and turn that shit up to boil. Right? Give him, telling me it's at a good temp? <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Are you uh, saying that the dial, Yeah. anybody could go? <laughs> no, no, we can't, but oh. I know where it is. I know where oh, it is. You, oh, I, you know I, where I'm it is. thinking about waiting one time and just turning it up, but that would be mutiny on the bounty. A, a member of a club turned up the pool dial, you know. That's... All right. So when you're going into a pool, we were yeah. just talking about this the other day, and it's hot. Right. Would you rather have the pool be at bath temp, or are you looking to go into the pool to like cool down and like get like, oh, this is refreshing? What, what's what's the pool take? Uh, listen, I mean, even if a pool is at is at. Uh, 80 it's still refreshing people act like I, I can't stand when it's where I want it and then another dad gets in there and he's playing ball with his kid and like happened the other day and the kid goes it's so hot in here hey, get the fuck out and go in the lake go in the lake it's right there it's right there this is nice all right you kidding me it's like in Italy this would be the law it would have to be this hot I think you know it's just like I don't know but my point is some people do think it's too warm. I like it nice. Uh, I like to be able to linger in it all day. I don't want to be in it for like 10 minutes and then start to have to do bobs. So that's where I'm at. I'm with you. We were just in a pool this weekend, twice at two different families' houses. And what ends up happening, you go into the pool and you chat. You're having a drink and you're talking, the kids are playing and whatnot. I like the temperature at 93 degrees in a pool. Oh, love now, it. Love right? It. It's like it, it's 90 outside, it's 93 in the pool. You get out of the pool, you're not freezing. You're in the pool, like you said, you're not bobbing, your nipples aren't hard. It's just the way it should be. And I grew up in cold Hello. water, bro. I grew up in cold water. There are no heated pools going to the park district. It, it, the, the heat came from the sun. Right. There was Same no like, means. mechanism in the pool <laughs> that got this thing up to 100. You know what I'm saying? And if it rained the night before, you knew that shit was going to be freezing. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah. But we dealt with it. We went as kids. We went in the pool. We played. We had fun. Here's my concern. Like, my kids now go into the pool, and they don't even know, like, not heated, right? Right, yeah. So when we get in, and it's like 85, right? They're like, oh, it's cold. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, this is going to be a problem. It's almost <laughs> like, I, I, I got to crank this thing. I got to put them in an ice bath or something to get them yeah. accustomed to, hey, you know, the, the water yeah. always not going to be 93. So if you go over to somebody's house and it's 85, <laughs> start swimming. Uh, Warm up. Do some, do some bobs. No, I, you, you're right because um, 
even when I was in, we go to Maine on vacation sometimes and there's this lake and it's freezing and it's gorgeous, but you can only go in for like five minutes. The Canadians were coming down. Oh my God, they're playing Marco Polo and this shit like it's Miami. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I didn't feel warm water till I went to Florida as a kid and jumped yeah. in a hotel pool and me and my sister were flipping out. We couldn't believe it. It was beautiful. Oh yeah, no, it was unbelievable. I mean, you grew up in the Midwest yeah. or on the East Coast of New York and then you go south for vacation and you go yeah. in the ocean and you go in the water. You're like, this is what the hell we've been doing up, up north. Well, um, anyway, I can't wait for that pool to be done, bro. I can't. It'll be done for the for the big double birthday party with you and Lana. The yeah, pool yeah. Will be the pool's going to be done in December. Nice. Uh, so we're looking forward to that. Uh, also looking forward to everybody that's listening and, and watching this. Share it. You know, we don't really ask people, hey, share the cast because it's a tight family and whatnot. We don't want to get too big, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, but let's if, spread it now. If you like, if you like what you're seeing here, please uh, share it with five people. And because uh, uh, we, 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 you know, with this Patrick in the corner, this guy's a fucking guru. Uh, yeah. You know, God, God knows where this thing is going to go with him. Uh, we're, we're, we're really relying on him big time to take us out of this. Uh, out of the basement of podcasts and and, and put us uh, number one past uh, what's the number one podcast in the world? Is it Joe Rogan? Yeah, he's been top for a long time. Okay, so that's what, that's what we're Joe Rogan. What is top, it? Top it podcast. Is, yeah. Wow. Yes. So yeah. uh, we'll get there. We'll get there. We've been doing this nine years, so it's 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 the tenth year is the big year. That's the uh, big one, baby. It was all leading up to this year. <laughs> exactly. All right. Thanks for listening to the Pete and Sebastian show. We will see you next week. In the meantime, stay safe and uh, we're out.